And we are live. All right. Jobber Nation, welcome to an at home edition of the Jobber Tears podcast. As always, I'm Jenna Formation out here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black in the building. Shout out to the New York Knicks taking game one of round two. Mr. Black is sporting the, the blue and orange that's native to the New York team. We have one too. We had we were selling these. They're selling these at, at Cat. Oh wow, that's nice. You, I actually you didn't like get it. Anything? Right. First of all, be lucky I got one. I wasn't even there for that buyout. I left. <laughs> but I think they do have hats, so I'm gonna get y'all hats. But um, how's everyone's week going? What's new? What's popping before we do jump into backlash and the historic account that happened there. Um and then we'll talk about the first I guess new I guess new era of Raw, the first episode of the new era of Raw with the new roster semi. Um them bringing back the prestige King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring. So um but before we do get into that, um how was the paper? How was the bar? The bar it was, was good. Solid. It was, it was a it was a decent amount of people. Um it was cool. It, it it was real chill. It was upstairs in the um the mezzanine, the chill the chill spot. So okay. it was it, it was it was cool. Um, what happened? The pay per view had had a decent amount of pops. I have my opinions about a couple things, but I will get to that. Okay. But it it, it was it was it was a good show. Yeah, it was. It was. He bruised this foot. <laughs> yeah. You said who bruised this? Who bruised what bruised- foot? What, Mr. Black? Yeah. How? What? How did you do that? Remember, remember, I fell on Friday with Mikey. How'd you guys fall? First of oh. all, you no, 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 no. <laughs> and I may have him come and tell the story because that's not what I was told. <laughs> you, you, Mikey. I fell. I basically fell. How did, how did y'all fall on Friday? <laughs> he talking about he bruised his foot. Oh, nah, I think it was face first. I don't know how you foot. See, he said you went face first, so he's like, he don't know how your foot got into play, but it did. I mean, he said it could have. <laughs> well, did you? <laughs> oh Lord. Okay. Well, I hope you feel better. <laughs> yeah. I still don't understand how he bruised. So nobody gonna tell me how he bruised his foot like yeah. that. Ain't yeah. nobody know he bruised his foot in that, in that. Yeah, yeah, in that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's better, though, but the only thing was a real bummer is that I couldn't rep this weekend. I was tight. Like, I look like, I look forward to Hall. Like, understanding, roughing is like sex to me. I look forward to it each and every time. Nick so called when I can't bitch. do it. Yo, listen, I couldn't move. Nick, Nick said, Nick said, Nick called you a bitch, but you know, Nick, something more on Nick mentally. Yeah, something's wrong with that. <laughs> that, that. I think it's crazy. He, he got, I, I was like, I was like, because I told him, I see, he's like, he's, you know how Nick talk. Where's your brother? And I, and I said, nah, he, um, he bruised his foot. He was like, ugh, so. <laughs> and I said, but he bruised his foot. And then, and then, and then he was like. He can still rap. He can still rap. I had a broken arm. You know how old niggas talk. I had a broken arm <laughs> and missing two fingers, and I rap. I like, Yo, oh, no, 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 that's different. That's different. Like, trust me, I have ref with a this this collated shoulder a couple of times. That's nothing. But if my feet, like, I can't maneuver. Like, I can't get out the way. It was just like I couldn't lateral. I couldn't step forward. I was limping every no, time. I understand. I kept telling Nick that he can't do that. He, and he's like, ugh, that's excuses. I was like, my brother's not built like that. He's like, ugh, ugh. But, I mean, I hope you feel better. I hope you ice it out. No, 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 no. Like, I went back to work today. I was perfectly fine. Like, the swelling went down everything like that. I took my ginger tea. I did everything I had to do. Like, to my Seymour's. You had like, swelling? I literally say those. Huh? You had swelling? Yeah, probably. Pretty bad swelling. Then it went down. And another thing too, I don't, sleep. I don't sleep. That's the problem. So you really don't sleep. That. Shout out to everyone so, that's here on a Tuesday evening in the chat. Right. I see a lot of people. Shout right. out to Lafayette Indiana in the building. Shout out to Robert. Um, Eddie jo- yeah, James just said, "What's up?" That sound like he sound like he part of like the the um the five heartbeats or something. Eddie <laughs> like, James. Eddie. That's the blackest. That's the top five black names. Yeah. Eddie James. 
Shout out to Lala with a speed recovery from a yeah, speed recovery to her um, as she recovers from injuring her hip. Um, I, just, at the- uh, uh, I put my hand up on my hip and I dip you, dip you, dip. I put my hand up on your hip. It was just and crazy. I dip you, dip you, dip. I put my hand up on your hip. Oh, shout out to JP Gills. Oh, shout out to JP. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, you, make sure to Gills. check out that episode with Sir, uh, Sir Wilkins was on with Jay-Z from NY. Make sure to tune in. The streets that are episode. still buzzing. The streets are still buzzing. The streets are talking. Well, um, all right, let's, let's get into a backlash. So, KJ, we all hanging in. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, for the day, but we're hanging Dude, in. When Hopefully. I dip, you dip, you dip. I put my yeah, hand up on your head. Yo, when I dip, you dip, you dip. Right I now. put my hand up on your head. Old ass song. Niggas get old. Niggas is on old. Like I forgot what I was playing. Like an Atlanta like playlist, and Air Force One came on, and I and I was blasting that in my office. <laughs> I didn't even care. What, like, was, what's funny? I've been trying to just peek like the young people at my job. So we're at this weird age where we're not old, but we're not young, right? We're, we're like in this in between age, you know what I it's mean? Gray area for us because it's like no problem, either, either we're too old for the young hip shit that's like now with the whole you know whatever mm-hmm. music out right now, and then we're too young for the eighties R and B hip hop nineties that era. Yeah. Like oh, y'all didn't yeah, live through the, the subway when it was. T- and on top of that, it's like you know another the, another issue is too is just you know like huh. Another he back in like I did. I said I know you did. You know how you old is how like, old is nigga? Forty. This nigga forty. That's not that old though. No, no but like certain things. But too, you gotta think like when he was in high school, I was just what? If we're six years apart, no, I'm just saying if if you were in high school, okay, maybe a little bit, but <laughs> we weren't dating then, so it doesn't sound. It's not gonna be as wild That's as it not is. Wild. That's not wild. That's not wild. Freaky. Freaky nigga. Freaky nigga. Freaky boss nigga. When he was a senior in high school, I was still in seventh grade. So, like... No, no, when you put it like that, yes. Because yes. there's a generational that's how, thing. That's the great... But that's the great area. Like, Jen... Jen is 46. Jen's 46? She looks good for 46. Holy shit. Yeah. But... And that's the thing. Like, that's the thing about our generation. Is oh. we look older. Like, like we look younger... Than the previous generation. No, because like, so it's it's really weird because we look I, younger than them. It's it's a funny thing because it's like our generation is like legit smack dab in the middle. Like yeah, we are like technology, but then no technology. Like we still know what pages we were rise, yeah. and dial we up everything. Yeah, like we were through that era of like the startup. So like yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like niggas don't remember like how like I remember my mom used to have a typewriter type shit like yeah like niggas don't remember that like we're old enough to remember nine eleven that's when you know like you're bro we was there yeah like I can I can tell you that day we vivid there. vivid like we it was were there I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't at at the World Trade Center nigga but well, no yo, not there I'm but like we was... were alive when yeah, it happened we was alive for it. yeah like it's it was dude. functional. That's what I'm but saying. But that's the crazy remember, part. Our, our, like, our little, like, I guess, that like, that 30 to 40, like, niggas literally went through terrorist attacks, probably, like, two good, solid pandemics, um, the fucking, the stocks kind of going down. Like, it just was a lot of, it, like, you... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't forget. Here's this crazy stuff that we went through. We went through two different wars. The Gulf nope. War... Afghanistan war. Don't forget that we went to the like the whole transition of we saw the beginning of hip hop. We saw the beginning of the transition from like where like there was front the streets with drugs and stuff like that. We was our parents crack babies and stuff like that. We were like, whoa, 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 wrong era. Yo, mama, That's the era mama before was, us. My mama no, no, was no, no, a no, no, no. in college no, no, when no, she no, had no, me. No, 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 no. You'd be surprised. A lot of our friends are crack babies. Like maybe a lot of our friends. Nigga, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> nigga, what are you but, talking about? But, but, but like how that but like how that what else? Like how that we was even there beginning of the internet to dial up. We was the beginning of where like airports, 
was wasn't as secure what it was. Like we was the beginning of wrestling. We saw the evolution of a lot of shit. Like we was allowed to see Vince at his highest in wrestling and his lowest a lowest. You know what's crazy? So y'all know Muscle Malcolm, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so he's the epitome of a of the new generation of wrestling fans. Yes. Like the yes. epitome of it. Yeah. Because I remember one time, and I always bring this up because he was talking about the PG era. And I'm talking about peak yes. PG era. Yeah. John Cena's king. Yeah. Albert Del Rio was the man. Yeah. That era. And I remember one time he's like, I liked it. Yeah, yes. But when you talk to him, he doesn't remember the original ECW without the WWE narrative. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? that's wicked. Somebody just said David, shout out to David. He said we witnessed the Monday Night Wars, which was like we lived through that. That's absolutely true. Like there was this chick, she um this is this girl posted this thing. She was like, um, she was mentioning about it, it was more about fuck. Um it was more about AEW having too much blood. And somebody replied to it. I was there, they was like, Well, you ain't watched ECW then. She was like, Yes, I did. What are you talking about? I saw Jack Hagger and Bobby Lashley. <laughs> they weren't bleeding like that. No, she didn't. No, I but that you know what? That's her truth. That was her truth. No, she didn't. But that was her Back up, back up. I was back saying here, like, but wait, technically wait, wait, wait. speaking, that was right. ECW. Was right, yeah. But even when ECW, when it was like blood, sweat, and tears, like I felt like it was more purpose to the bleeding versus it just being no, no, a no. It, it was, it was, bleed it was a quality, a quality thing. But what I'm I saying agree. is that. That's what I'm saying. It's a whole, like, to live through what we live, and I know age is a beautiful thing, and I'm starting to understand it, how we're yeah. aging, but, but, but we're at a place, um, we're at a place where, where we can talk about so many things. Like, to be honest, I can talk about Hogan's era, because I watched a little bit of it. But I can't say I was outside for Hogan's era. Right. <laughs> facts, facts. You're right. Like, like, I, like for me, like, because I went back a little bit, but, like, when I got into wrestling, it was the Hogan, NWO, WCW Hogan. Like, I saw, like, the Hogan that screwed Macho went into NWO Hogan. I didn't know, like, Golden Era Hogan at that time. So, so I, I knew Golden Era Hogan because that's the only thing my father would ever watch with us, especially me. Uh, nigga, we had a we had a father that wasn't around. He loved us, but he wasn't around. So obviously, how should I be in twenty twenty? How should I be in twenty twenty? I don't remember him much being around. Like he was around, but he wasn't around. Oh, therapy <laughs> session, therapy Ooh. session, nigga. How should I be in twenty twenty? Like Ooh. he used to work all day, come home around like give and take eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and after I had a. Yeah, after I go work, do all get the weekends. He was hardly ever home. He's always go chill with his friends. Yo, I'm and not then, gonna violate mine because I from I really do believe he listens. So I ain't gonna even go that far. I ain't gonna do that. What? <laughs> I'm gonna like that. I said I, I don't want to violate because I'm pretty confident mine watches us. So. Oh! 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 oh, oh. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <what> I <laughs> but I will say. He did take, I mean, he probably was low-key for but he did take me to my first WWE show. So I will so, give him that. Yeah. We can say this, because our father's dead. So, so that, the nigga dead. Yeah. So we, we can talk about him in any way. Yeah, I was about to say, y'all, I'm just like, listen, I, I'm in yeah. a new space. I'm positive. I don't want to violate, because you I could. It, but right. to, to, to go back to that, to go back to the era conversation, like, yeah, I was watch. I watched a little bit of Hogan in that era, but it's not like it. it, it, it I remembered it because it was like it was early ages of my life. But when you got into it, into it, like invested, invested. I'm talking about this is new generation era. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels going into that attitude era. That's when I was invested. But here's the thing, though our our version of Hogan. 
is Hollywood Hogan. Thunder and Paradise. Him and Rocky right. and stuff like that. That's our Hogan. You feel me? Our John Cena is yo world life John Cena. This nigga was these rapping. John Cena, Rap yes. Album. yes. So these nigga John Cena is PG era John Cena. You feel me? It, yo, he used just... to say, yo, if you go back and watch some of the promos and stuff that he did when he was rap, like when he first did Word Life, like when him and Boo Buchanan was like was together, low key, like that nigga John Cena was crazy. Like he played the wildest shit. You'd be like, hold on a minute. Yes. <laughs> While yes. John Cena, like, and we mentioned on the last episode, like the nigga had an ill career, B. Yo, stellar. Like, if anybody ever wanted the blueprint to how to really have, like, such a long, memorable career, Jonathan Cena is the you blueprint. You know the crazy thing about it? You know the crazy thing about it? There's no difference between him and our truth What do you mean? Well, that's his favorite wrestler, so. Because if you really think about it, what's the difference between our truth and John Cena? They both can rap. They both hella entertaining. You can put them in any situation. Like, they're great with kids. Everything that our John Cena is, our truth is. I think I think John Cena's better on the microphone. And outside of being champion multiple times. But, no. Outside of, like, the, like those are stuff that was given to him. Like, how that, he can't control that. But there's no difference between our truth and John Cena. Take away the accolade. Look at them like if you was going to, um, if you was looking at it like a creator wrestler to win accolades, you start from fresh. John Cena and R Truth is no different from the character. There's an argument for it. Yeah. I, I would kind of co sign a little bit on the promo type tip, but I mean, in terms of if, if the criteria is entertaining, longevity, uh, what is another criteria? criteria you said was similar. Like if the criteria you gave, then yes, you can you can say yes, they are they are similar in that criteria that you give. But like they both have albums, rap albums. They both come on. Come on. Like 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 yo people I think I said like, one two three freak said black is drunk. <laughs> yo, <laughs> it's true. It's true. There's no difference. It's the same character. All you guys keep looking at like everyone else Outside, look at it. Stop looking at it just on the surface. Look at a deeper level. They both rapping characters. At when when they gave Truth a chance, he ran with it. Capital Punishment Truth, lean into that fire, little Jimmy, all of that doing craziness. But they never really give him a chance. TNA did, and look what happened. He was a fire NWA champion. So there's like 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 real talk. There's really no difference between R Truth and John Cena. This I I I I will give definitely they have similarities. Yes. Okay. I listen, listen. Fully, I, I can't fully I, get I, on board I, with them being the exact, but there are similarities. Yes, I will definitely agree to that. But all right, let's get into our backlash review this past weekend. Backlash was a oh wow, we bought the record for the most people on a night stream. One. I'm gonna on here. Oh God! Thank you guys for on a Tuesday night. Y'all can be watching NXT, but you watching us. We appreciate freaky, that. Freaky, freaky jobbers, freaky jobbers. <laughs> Seven one eight over your whole niggas. Oh, sorry. I'm over you. Um. So yes, backlash was in Lyon, France. Um. About two hours from France, guys. No, you have those. No, I'm not. But I will say, after watching this pay per view, I definitely twenty twenty five bucket list international show for WWE is definitely on there now. Like, they're about to, every, telling you to friends. They're about to do every minor pay per view and, and um. Well, that's what they and, said. They said they're gonna keep um Rumble. Yeah, Indiana, that's the plan. Yeah, Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series in the U.S. and then all the mm-hmm. little ones like Backlash, um, King of the Ring, like they're doing now, um, Clash of the Castle. Berlin in August. They're gonna do those. Do you blame them? Do you blame? I them? mean, no. Listen, when you're a global company and you have like the reason why those fans were reacted and gave that energy, they don't have. They don't get WWE like that. They appreciate they it. They, 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 they need to do WWE in Haiti. You, you know what they do? You know what we do? Like, like how to like? You know what we do over here? One, 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 
every two seconds. We don't appreciate wrestling out here. Like you, you literally have to go to the same thirteen states to get wrestling fans that appreciate the sport over and over and over again. But that's why it's good. That's that's why I appreciate when I go to shows outside of New York because it's always a different vibe. It's always a different experience. So, which is your favorite? Tokyo. Where which which city was your favorite to watch wrestling? Tokyo. Ooh. Tokyo. <laughs> Tokyo. Have, you, when have you been to Tokyo? No, I'm talking about you've been like, places that you've been. <laughs> oh, been? North Carolina. North um Carolina. I feel like it's a tie. Definitely Chicago. <clears throat> Definitely Chicago. Um, um and I will kind of say, I mean, experience wise, I definitely would probably say Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, both WWE and on the Indies because we did sponsor that show. I had went to Dallas for like just different, you know, just seeing the culture kind of come out in that sense. But definitely hands down Chicago, probably for me because I think I've been. I did War Games there. I did Money in the Bank there. Which just the Survivor Series there. So like I've been to quite a few shows at Allstate, and that that vibe is just very different. Like that energy is very different in Chicago. Um, the few places I've gone to, uh, like outside of New York, New Jersey, uh, Detroit was really good. Mm-hmm. I like Detroit a lot. Like the shots of Vlad, and shots of Stretch. Well, happy belated. <laughs> Last birthday was just sad not too long ago. And he's also doing a project with um Eminem. Yeah, he's like a Vlad. So. <laughs> Valid. Um, oh, valid. My bad. You know, so, but the, the, the thing is, I think it was Detroit for toy. me. And I think Texas, low key, yeah, might like, have the best crowd. Because, yeah, we I went to San Antonio and that was that was a rumble that year. That was a blast. Um, Dallas twice for Mania. Both times they were there. I had a great time. Uh, yeah, no, oh. I, I feel like. I like that. Nigga said shotgun Saturday night. <laughs> that would be fire. Yo, that would be hot. That would be fire. I mean, listen. They just had like a wrestling event in New York not too long ago, a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, in Times Square. Oh, you yeah, the hot dog thing? Yo, oh, and it was the day we recorded too. So when I when I right. got back to Brooklyn and I saw yeah. Roger talking about, yo, why nobody hit me up, blah, blah, blah. Like everybody's in Times Square. I was like, for what? Like yeah, I, I, I saw that too. That's why I thought I was like, oh, we should have went and recorded. Right. Like had I known, I would have yeah, I would have yeah, yeah, around yeah. real quick. I know. But that. no, I'm but backlash this past Saturday afternoon here in the States. Um quality over quantity. I can appreciate WWE for that. There was only what about five matches. Um and I think oh no. So I like I love New Orleans. Like that, that outside of wrestling, so like, I definitely can. That was definitely an and that was an adventure in its own. But um, backlash. <laughs> <trip, so, laughs> that was the most drama filled trip I think I've ever been on for wrestling ever, <laughs> like ever. I think it was wild on that trip. Like Larry almost Larry almost missed his flight back home. Like my, my bad, MDB. Oh, so, listen, that's why I'm recording it on my sling. <laughs> it's all right. Y'all, he was this one, Mr. Black one had it on earlier. I said, like, You got to meet yourself because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but uh, Backlash kicked off with what we ended up finding out to be a street fight, which was Randall and Kevin Owens going to get blood, blood, Bloodline 2.0 of Solo Sokoa and Amatanga's hot ass. Um, what were your thoughts? Ups, downs, what do you guys think about honestly, think about the winning contest? Honestly, that was the best match. Like, I feel no like as far as action wise, as far as storyline, how you introduced everything like that, that was the best match. A lot of people was complaining, oh, he missed the referee, he came out too late. Shut the fuck up. All right, you just fucking nitpicking because it doesn't matter. All right, at the end of the day, though, everybody did their job. Everybody did their job. The referee, um, what's that? Um, got his name. Um, not Tom Tonga, his brother. 
Tangaloa. I think that's his name. Tangaloa. Tangaloa. He did his job. Regardless, the time was off, whatever, whatever, he still went follow through. It was a great match. It was a great surprise. And even the subtle details where Paul Heyman is just shook because he don't put the ones up. And the one thing that's key, a lot of people was missing. You notice that, how they don't call them the bloodline. It's like bloodline something, something. I, 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 that was called like the uh, knockout bloodline, something like that. Oh, I never heard. I just heard bloodline. I heard something like that. Like, this thing got special ears. Yeah, but, but like how that bloodline, the fact that how that you notice that nobody, nobody, nobody from the, the um tribal chief because there's really is a tribal chief, Roman Reigns. It's like so deep a lore. Every, and the fact that he saw Jay, looked at him, and the God, he looked at them. Ooh, everybody knows wrestling fans. We finally get the match. Look at oh, him, and then I you saw Paul Heyman walk up. Was just like yo. Like on some help me, and Jay was like, "Nah, I gotta focus." And because Yo, my of man that, is a you, help me, help yes. Me. And you don't know. You see the little details like that. You don't know that could have cost him the match. That little distra- <sighs> the details, my nigga. The de- mm. mm mm mm. And everybody complaining. The bloodline's doing too much. Da-da-da-da. Thank you, Roman. How many stars that the blood I introduce? Thank you, and Roman. We, and, and one more thing. Nigga has been hating on Jay. Oh, Jay is trash. You know, he ain't over. Had the whole France. Day one. Is... Let me explain something to you. Come on. Rand showed up and showed out for every single person that came out. But that Jay Uso entrance, to then fast forward to the game seven of the Cleveland Cavaliers game, where they did it. At the arena, too, they played Jay Uso's music. They played a wrestling theme song at a basketball game. And he had ain't the over, though, right? So, he ain't so, over, though, right? And, he ain't and, over, though, right? But he ain't and, over, though, right? And, 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 and fuck out of here. I will say this. Wrestling is low-key hot, but, I'm, but I always say low-key hot. Because every time I'm at, um, because I have season tickets, I have season tickets to the, um, the Devils game. Why? Why? Is Mama 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 yeah, huh? and he lived right there. He lived walking this. I like, I, 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 I like to do. I like to do other things outside of wrestling. So you want to be white so bad? <laughs> How is that being white? <laughs> I think it is. Don't team. kill the fun. <laughs> Dang, B. Kill him the fun, B. So Dang, I, I, right, I go. You. I go to the games, and. They always play Seth Rollins theme song. Mm. And one oh, wow. of their like mascot people or like signature thing is 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 um is Ric Flair, which we know Ric Flair is out here drunk on these streets, but it's a different conversation. No, I didn't even Facts. see that. This one sent it to me. I haven't seen it yet, but he was drunk as a wrestler. So let me ask you this question. For people who don't know, there was a, a, a video that's been out of Ric Flair literally being belligerent and being dr- drunk Ric Flair. Now, do you think this coming to a point where he's slowly starting to hurt his aura or it doesn't matter? I think it doesn't matter. I, I think Ric Flair has, has done so much. And also, too, it's not like we we are. It's not like we're not known to his to, to what he's gone through, That's the thing, yeah. and the things that he continues to go through. So it's almost like we're always just going to give this nigga a pass just because it's Ric Flair, mm-hmm. um, and we just gonna ride this ride until it ends kind of situation. But I don't think that it is gonna. I don't think anything. He listen if if he hasn't tarnished his his legacy by now, I really don't see it. That's that what happening. I'm saying though. That's true. Um, that's true. I just wanted to. I just wanted to hear, hear the opinion on it. No, 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 um, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying because, like, I gotta agree with Janelle because at this point, though, like, we hear all these stories. Like, they, it's kind of folklore. You understand? We're like, oh yeah, Rick Flair, Rick Flair, this, that, and third. Even in the report, they was just like, yo, we're not trying to get him in trouble. But at some point, though, we do give him too much passes. Though, at some point, though, like, we have to like understand that I right, man, we got enough is enough because we ain't shit. Like, the fact that a lot of us paid to see Ric Flair last match and this man almost died. No, and, he and did like, die. How about he did? He, he said he had a no, heart he attack. Yo, no, this man had a heart attack. 
and us wrestling fans ain't shit. We talk about yo, he shouldn't do it, but I, but a lot of us went to pay, flew, got, bought tickets for this event to watch this man die in twice, and now you care how now we care about how Rick fan looks outside. No, because we've been done encouraging his behavior way too long. The fact that we bought tickets to this this man event, we, we watched him die twice. And we was like, justify, oh, it could work out. It was a tag team match. We ain't shit. At some point, enough is enough. We got to treat him a lesson. Because at this point, it's not cool. It's not. It's sad. It's sad. But, but, it's not, but I don't think it's so much on us. I think really it's, it's Rick. <laughs> like, I think Rick was the one that wanted to do the last match. Rick was the one that wanted the tag match. He picked his partner. Well, why you know what I mean? for it then? Because niggas at the end of the day are still a fan. You telling me your favorite wrestler? You telling me your favorite wrestler? Like even example, I wanted to go see Sting's last match. No, I did not go, but I wanted to go and see Sting's last match because when you have that kind of like it's that last, you want to be there for that moment, regardless of how the outcome is. If you are a fan of that person, you're gonna want to go and see that you want to be there live and in color. So I don't fault people for going. To seeing Ric Flair's last match, even though Loki wasn't, because nigga been in the ring. How many it's other times? It's a difference that between the greatest, one of the greatest performance ever, Sting match. Because you're still able to do it. There was no fear of him dying. Rick Flair, but the thing is, so 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 let me let me say this. Think my table you, spot, man. You didn't expect him to almost die. You were expecting maybe a, a probably not out of ten a shitty match. Because he's old as dirt at this point. So why do we encourage this? We should not encourage this. And you know what okay. crazy thing about it? A couple people said it. Yo, this is not a good idea. He shouldn't do this at all. He could possibly could die. So we heard the warnings. But see, but once again, it goes back to him. Like he's the one that sat there, told everybody, yo, the doctors cleared him. You know what I mean? Like these are all things that that happened. So I I wouldn't put that so much on fans going to support like the individual yes, still makes, makes the decision. No, I'm not I'm not doing that. That that that's putting the fault on on fans when the fault is really actually on the individual that really shouldn't have his ass in the ring. The like, only yeah. way that how that anything gets going is, is the power by the people. If there's a demand and people are paying for it, and then it's gonna happen. If nobody was paying for it, he would have canceled it. Uh, no, he still. I think he still would have done it. He still would have wrestled. Yeah, I was like, ah. Uh. When when you have a contract, you already your negative. Your account is in the negative, probably, and this is probably gonna get you out of the negative, regardless. People do too. They they gonna he gonna do it. It's it's not it's unfortunate, and we want better for him. But Rick gotta want better for Rick. <laughs> we can't we can't control how this nigga shows up. Like. <laughs> Rick is, Rick is a wild boy, but get back to backlash. Right. Um, so, Bloodline, yeah. KO, Archie. Good good um, I, I love the fact that we got swerved on, on who the newest member of the Bloodline is. Like, I, I will give WWE that credit because all since WrestleMania, everybody's been on the edge of their seat waiting for, 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 for uh, Jacob to come. It's like, yo, Jacob's coming. Jacob's coming. Jacob's coming. Jacob's coming. And not not a thing was thought about coming to his brother. So that curve, while I was Fire. like, I appreciated Fire. it. It made me be like, okay, we re- this is where we're really going. And then when um when the brothers had crossed Jay Uso, I said, oh, they're really gonna do this Uso versus these niggas. Oh, okay, this I is what's amazing. They have no choice. Oh, okay, no this is choice. what we're like, we're locking in. in. This is WrestleMania night one. Okay. In Vegas. Okay. Oh, you got to speak of that. Well, speaking of that, they had announced, I believe, during the Kentucky Derby, which was following um Backlash, that next year's WrestleMania will be in Sin City in Las Vegas during 420 weekend of all time. So night two is 420. So you definitely it's, I it's think definitely it's gonna be my first WrestleMania. I think it's it's about to be it's about to be a whole this, different. It's gonna be my first animal. WrestleMania. This, you know what? I, Mr. Black said on this show, "I'm going to WrestleMania next year." That's okay. It. All right. That's it. If that if that is the truth, then we may have to work on doing something there. So there's that. But no, uh, but shout out to them finally announcing WrestleMania weekend. 
So I was wrestling on the Easter too. Listen, I ain't worried about no Jesus on 420. I'm worried about wait, my four, wrestling. Wait, Easter Sunday next year is 420? Wow. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Um, Easter falls on 420. Wow. Because I was, yo, because when they had announced, I was like, wait, when, when's that over? Because, <laughs> but it's the week before. So I thought, okay, whoo, we good. We what valid. So, all right. Um, you wouldn't have been able to go? If it was during Passover, probably not. Probably not. Because, yeah, that, that's a whole different I mean, thing. Like, in the beginning, because I mean, had it been that, the had it been the weekend before, yeah, had it been like that weekend going into Passover, it would probably would have been a job for me. So but you guys are that but busy. It's not that busy. <laughs> Nigga, I was doing 12 hour days going Passover. <laughs> Baby, these Jews don't stop. But anyway, um, so we had the tag match. Um, Solo Sokoa and Tomatonga ended up getting the W. Um, but once again, that crowd hung on for that street fight. Um, it, it was it, it was definitely it it was a good street. Like I, I enjoyed that match. The Trinidadian dude was there. The Trinidadian. Yo, was I there. need somebody that yo anybody that knows the Trinidadian dude in the front row. Yo, tell him we I'm looking for him. I want to interview him so bad. Cause I'm just like, how the fuck did you get there? Yo, you was talking about that. Like I was like, yo, I heard that he been around. Like no, no. He for me, what I started noticing, he was around when fans started come back to the arenas. That's when I saw him. And he's smart because he probably know he the only Trinidadian nigga in the front row. So him wearing that flag sticks out like a sore throat. Every that's time. The only way I know. Every I'm time. like, oh, oh that's it's just like him. Dude. It's just like the Brock Lesnar guy, but his name is his name is really Mike. But the Brock Lesnar guy with the shirt. So if you see him, you know you see the shirt, you know it's him. But Have you met him, Mike? Yeah, in Chicago, because he oh, lives oh. out in Chicago. So I met me him. That he, the, he knows my my homegirl Auntie, so that's how I met him. Someone told me that the um the Trinidadian dude told Roman to hit <laughs> Kevin Owens again. It was like at the Royal. It was like if you watch the Royal Rumble, right? He ain't shit. It was like the Royal Rumble. Kevin Owens, um, Roman was fighting, and, and Roman Reigns hit him on the you know on the stairs, and then he said Roman Reigns. Do it again. Do it again. Rose said, I, I'll do it again. And he did it again. <laughs> That's like, yo, I don't oh, fuck Tristan, with that you know, you say, He got an IG. Tristan, if you know what his IG is, put it in the comments, please. Yes, please. I definitely, please. I definitely want to interview him. We got to interview, interview, interview that man. Go. We got to interview that um, man. What was the That's next match man's. after the tag match? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, what other matches were they? Um, Jesus. Well, I want to talk about the Bianca match. Okay, I feel like the, I knew that that actually is the match before the main event that I do remember vividly. Um, uh, before we, let's let's talk about the other match before we get into that. Um, championship match. You brought up Jay Uso versus Punisher Martinez, aka Damian Priest. Um, I love the they're dropping the baby face turn for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually can appreciate that. And I kind of knew he was going to be the one to break out of the Judgment Day from, like, maybe about a year ago. But I love the fact oh, that the he the Triple Threat. Oh, the Naomi. <laughs> it's Tiffy time. Hold on. We're going to get into that real quick. Um, but the Jey Uso and um, Damian Priest match, um, I solid. thought storytelling-wise was really good. It was good. Um. Mm-hmm. Definitely a lot of predictive. people like how um a lot of people say that Jay Uso needs to change his move set. Then I'm like, well, I don't know. Oh my god, everyone in wrestling has five moves. Like, let's let's cut it out. Let's not act like there's an arsenal of 30 fucking moves niggas use. AJ Styles just had an interview. He retired a move because he hasn't done it in so long. He don't even know how to do it no more. Let's just stop. Yeah, I think it's the um That's him. The final tap thing. What's it called? Oh, that's him. I think oh Yarny. Write that down. Get that. Get that. Um, he has said it in an interview. I think it's the same move Osprey uses. And AJ has said he hadn't used it in such a long time. He low key kind of forgot how to maneuver his body that way. So he does not do the move yep. anymore. Yes, yeah, spinal tap. That's what I said. See? Thank you, Vaughn Charles Vaughn in the building. The spinal tap move. He don't do that no more because he said, yo, I can't even get my body to flip the way that it gotta flip anymore. So that whole like move set thing. Things change, like let's let's just stop that right now, okay? <laughs> I hate that. 
Everybody they don't complain about this, like, five moves to Zoom. Everybody got fucking five moves. Like Roman got fucking five. <laughs> so what are we talking if you about? talk to like people who are signed, who've been to the E, been to AEW, whatever, been higher places, they'll tell you, yo, they don't give a shit about the moves. They give a shit like the, the, the basics. Can you run the ropes? Can you sell? All the stuff that really matters. Because anybody could do a bunch of moves, though, but I can't tell the story with that move. Because you can do only two moves in a match, and then you get over. Look at right. Jeff Hardy versus Undertaker. Jeff Hardy barely did any moves. He probably did, like, two moves, three moves in that. Undertaker probably did, like, one move, couple of moves. But at the end of the day, it was a great storytelling. They told a story. That's what it is. Um, all right, so the women's um, world title match, Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton. Um, hold on, KJ, uh, KJ, that question. Um, I thought honestly, could have been one of the top matches for me. Just how it flowed and triple threats are so hard because not everybody low key can get their shit in. But those three women together were able to get everyone to showcase their own selves and every which way throughout the match. I appreciate it. I'm actually glad Tiffany didn't take the pin because I definitely, they definitely are going to rise up to the top. And I'm super excited that she's on the main roster now. She's been phenomenal in NXT. She was killing it there. So I'm glad that now on the bigger stage, people can appreciate her. Um, I, I honestly thought that match was perfectly done. I didn't like, I didn't like that they broke kayfabe a little bit, but but that's the era that we live in now. Well, I really thought Naomi was gonna snatch her ball. I yeah, really was that's, that's what I thought she was gonna. Uh, go and shit, her I was sitting there so hard, like yo, Naomi, if you snatch this bitch, I will pop so hard. But she didn't do it, so I was like, all right. But that's not her, so I was like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like it too much, but but the match was really, really like that three D that came out of nowhere. I was like, what? no, the th- and that's a time thing. Like you can't just like. That is such like a precis- a precise time move. The fact that they were able to do that and they never really even tagged with each other ever before. Like I was just like, whoa, what are we doing here? Like this and is thing, great. And one thing I have to say is this way. TNA did Naomi justice. Because boy, she know how to flow. Like the, the little thing she did in the match is so much better. Oh my gosh, she became a way better performer. I, I just, I, I it, it was that probably, I think KJ said that might have been the best match of the night for me, too. Yeah, like in all honesty, Whoa, like ice cream I, truck I, outside. I don't know, it's not that hot outside, so I don't know if Mr. Sophie out, but no, um, just I think for overall match, it definitely hit a lot for me. Yeah, it did, it was a good so, match. Uh, we got we got new <laughs> women tag team champions, ladies and gentlemen. Jay and Bianca out here winning titles in France. Woo! Everyone's issue was it went on too long. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Who's just a fuck? Like, no, 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 no. I, I don't. I don't know what people were talking about. So confused. I. So honestly speaking, I watched the match, but I was watching it in and out because I was at work. I was. I was doing paper, so you know you can't hundred percent focus on it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, I'm watching it. <laughs> then the other day, I legit sat down, had no distractions, and watched the match twice. Bruh, it wasn't as bad as people said it was, in my opinion. I l- Listen, I didn't say it was a bad match. You know no, I'm not I talking about, I'm not no, talking no, no, about like you. The internet, no, he's not talking about you. He's talking about like some people on the internet have been saying like, uh, I wasn't all that. Jade is, isn't all that. And it's just like, you have to appreciate the little things in the matches for me. And especially, and I actually, I got to give kudos to WWE because instead of putting her by herself and really truly, because one, two, three underscore freak had mentioned that us exposed. Had she not been in a tag match, I definitely think she would have been way more exposed than she was in the tag match. I think putting her with some type of, I guess, in a sense of veteran in this kind of era that can kind of help her and navigate through the WWE waters, I think it's genius. I think them putting, and I didn't first, I wasn't too like, I was I was 50 50 on it, in all honesty, because I'm never really like putting two people together as tag team just randomly doesn't always work. But I love the fact that they can have this journey together. 
I love the fact that Bianca can be the strongest, the, the fastest, the bestest, and Jay can be that giant and come in and do one, two moves, and then that's it. That's all we need. So but this I is what I got from the match. Mm -hmm. And this is what I've gotten from, like, just in general. Jade is a powerhouse. She's not athletic. And there's a difference. Mm -hmm. When I say that, it's not a bad thing as, 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 like, oh, she's trash. No. She can't do no... She's not a really, like, this super agile, super athletic person like Bianca is. But the one thing she can make her moves look powerful. Oh, like, like they mean strong. Like make it look like I'ma knock a bitch out. Correct. Right, yo. But even to the athleticism part, bro, when she popped, when she springboard off that top rope, I said. Who the fuck well, that? But that's the thing. You bring oh, that out. You bring that out a little bit. That's like the one move you do here and there. But she's a powerhouse. So we use that. Well, from my experience watching the match, is I just felt that it wasn't a bad match. It had a lot more highs than it had lows. But when it hit the lows, it was just like on some dang. You could tell towards the end, it was kind of like a lot of miscommunication. But overall, though, because everybody at the bar was just like, people were still into it. That's the difference. People was like, uh, okay, this last little bit too long. Kind of, It kind of lost people, but overall, it had good moments. Especially the double-team move that they did, fire. It had a lot of like, oh, shoot, hot. Everybody from my end, a lot of the black dudes, like, okay, let's say there was like 20 black dudes. Let's say after 20, 18 of them was on my side, like, yo, that shit was fire. Da, 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 this, that, and third, blah, blah, blah. She improved. We all say, nah, man, she got better. She got better. We all copy on the fact that how far she came. Now, when there's other black dudes there, yeah, there was fucking haters. That shit was trash. Da, 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 da. Nick picking everything. Oh, she too muscular to be doing this. Da, 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 this, that, and third. We, listen, we got a whole argument that how that they said that, how that, nah, she's ugly because she's like, she's like way too muscular. I was like, nigga, I'm gonna fry you, B. He was part of the he was part of the I wear basketball shorts all year round crew. Okay, Hold, that's not the point. The point was overall, it got the job done because the fact that men reacted, it got everybody behind. Like, nah, she improved a big type of way. But what I noticed is when it comes to black women, especially in wrestling, y'all get the extra Nick pick extra lead. You come from women that who barely has structure to get into the structure, all within, like, what, four months? And the fact that she grows this fast, man, give her a break, big dogs. I don't but know it's young crew. also, people don't understand wrestling. They don't. They so, don't. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to use multiple examples. Kurt Angle, who is an Olympic gold medalist, who all of us collectively can say was probably one of the greatest wrestlers of his era. Yeah. Am I yeah, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me, Janelle? Yeah. Are you with me, Mr. Black? Yeah. He was he's in that conversation, yeah. No, he like he's in the conversation of yeah. being one of the greatest wrestlers of the past. Right? Now, I'm not saying the best, but he's he's in that that conversation of no, he's in the conversation. technical ability. Especially huh? coming from uh, no, he's in the conversation, especially more because of him coming from the type of like Olympic wrestling that he was doing to then transitioning into running ropes and, and, and doing dives and doing that, you know, doing actual things in the, in the square circle. Yeah. Yeah. So storytelling, all of that, he almost quit before he became, before he debuted it. Now, he's a freak of nature athletically. Conditioned out the ass. One of the greatest Greco-Roman style wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And he almost quit professional wrestling because he couldn't get it. That's what a lot of people don't know about. Now, number two. You mentioned the time that she has. It takes years 
years for you to figure out your footing in profession. Some people pick it up right away. Some people pick it up very long time. So when I see people say shit, I'm like, you don't know wrestling. Because also, to go from, to make something look real without hurting somebody, that shit is fucking hard. Uh-huh. Also, footwork is extremely hard. And you mentioned something, communication in the ring. If we don't have chemistry and you're not leading me, how the fuck am I supposed to get it right? And just like one, two, three freak said is she's not at later age. Like, she's my age. Yeah, like look, understanding. And when you start wrestling, like, it was something from my point of view, start wrestling. Starting wrestling at the age that we all started, especially me training and stuff like that, you have to, from all these years, 30-something years, I've been telling myself to brace myself when I fall. I got to um, step a certain type of way all my life. Now, in wrestling, I got to do the complete opposite or something like that. That shit takes time, especially when you're older. Like, nah, that shit is hard as shit, though, son. And then, then on top of it, don't forget that you have your own self that you have to go against because you may be, maybe, you may be on some like, dang, so I'm not getting, I'm not getting it compared to people a lot younger than you picking up like that. There's a lot of mental, all my coming to rest. That shit's not easy, son. Like, nah, like half y'all, let me shut up. <laughs> but yeah, but go on. Janelle. But all right. And then last but not least, we had definitely, definitely a professional wrestling match. We had the main event, which was Cody Rhodes going against the phenomenal AJ Styles. It was um, I just, I, I actually love the fact that just commentary. Let me explain something to y'all. I tell people all the time, commentary is by, outside of actual in-ring wrestling. Commentary is the hardest thing in professional wrestling. Because not only do you have to you have to create a story for people listening, but you also got to know shit. And I love the fact that, I guess, you know, because once again, the, you know, the word is new era. I love the fact that Michael Cole gave the story, gave the, gave actually pulled, pulled the curtain all the way back and said the both of them was in Bullet Club. I said, oh, we doing this. I like this. Because it adds another layer of investment to the match. For me, watching it, I saw two guys that were in Impact at two different times in two different eras going against each other. Two former Bullet Club members going against each other. The first time ever that they probably low-key wrestled each other in WWE. So it was just like, yo, we're really getting, like, some real shit. And I really loved the fact that commentary was able, throughout the, actually the entire show, I love the fact that Michael Cole was able to really, really tell that story tell different stories throughout every match and give a little bit of historical reference for for each of them. But I enjoyed Cody and AJ. I kind of wish it was kind of like a continuing thing because <laughs> I like them both. Um, but it did what it had to do. And I think it definitely, it gives another notch to Cody um, to being able to keep to you to being the face of the company because that's what he is currently is the face of the company. Um but no, that France crowd, I just wish it was a translator. I was just like, half of the shit, I don't know what they're saying, but I'm going to just guess. But the energy was there. The crowd was there. Also for SmackDown, too, the night before. Um, they were there live and in color. And definitely shout out to, to the France crowd that, that gave us backlash. So, all right. So, then Monday Night Raw yesterday, um, WWE Draft goes into full effect starting yesterday. So we saw some new faces on Raw. We got some video packages. I had text. I had text your brother like I said, video package alert. Yeah, <laughs> I saw, it was a really good video <laughs> package for for, for Dragon. Actually, they got two because so they did one for Ilya Dragon over and they did the other one for um, Lara Valkyrie. And I was like, Whoa. but where is a video package for Tom and Tongo? Listen, ask them. I don't know, but you get what you get, and that's it. No, 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 but, no, no, um, no, 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 because if AEW did the same exact shit. Y'all, y'all be on the ass. Nigga, who cares? Like, if you need one, why don't you make one? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, because you be the first to say of, the same thing too. There's a lot, of, but there's a lot of other things that they do that they should do that they don't do. 
So nah, and it's it, principal dogs. It's not. Um, but Monday Night Raw, they have kicked off the tournament for the King and Queen of the Ring, which will be, I believe, commencing in about two weeks in Saudi Arabia. They're gonna actually do Friday Night SmackDown and King and King of the Ring Memorial Day weekend in Saudi Arabia. So we are getting so <laughs> make sure to find out the legends. Um, so we are gearing up for that. And let me tell y'all, these brackets. Whew, oh, fire! They are, fire! They are like they are intense, like for real, for real. Book of um, the year, my nigga, Triple H. Yo, when I saw SmackDown's bracket, I said, "Whoa, <laughs> they got Baron Corbin and Melo. They got Tomasonga in there." Um, for the King of the Ring tournament. Um, I just like the fresh faces though. I think it's I think it's really dope. Um, I actually low key would have loved to see Raven Theory versus Kofi on TV, but I digress. Nah, uh, I think that's fire though. Having a house show though. No, I so show, I see the purpose in doing it because yeah. you encourage people to go to the show because this is gonna be this is your match that you're only gonna be able to see. So no, I get the business side of it, but I was just as a fan like when they had announced it last yeah. week, I was like, damn, I want to see Raven Theory versus Kofi. And then Kobe gave the promo, and I was like, "Damn!" But um, but they started off um, King of the Ring. They had Ricochet versus Ilya Dragunov, which I did not think that was the match I needed to see. Fire. <laughs> um, Ilya Dragunov qualified. Um, you had um, who else was in the tournament this past yesterday? Oh, I barely remember this morning. Um. <laughs> They definitely had the main event was Gunther versus Sheamus, and I loved that the entire show they were able to build to the match. Like they told you, yo, the first time at the rodeo, they had the IC title match, they had the WrestleMania match. Like I liked them that they used the entire show to kind of build up to the main event. Um, and then Gunther's promo where he was like, "I don't give a fuck about, but I don't give a fuck about your bangers." I was like, damn. <laughs> he said that shit with his whole chest. Um, like um, David said, I think Gunther's gonna win this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They are literally, like, when they started, when people start, when they started saying, like, I'm declaring myself for the King of the Ring, I was just saying, here, like, oh, we're really making this a big deal. Oh, I like the way this is going. And plus, I think it'll be a good thing for Gunther, another prestige, prestigious historical thing for him to, to be a part of, because um, that King of the Ring class is still kind of small. So I think definitely see Gunther winning. Um, um, on the men's side, but I would love to see who's going to be in the finals. So, because once again, it's each brand, so you get one person from SmackDown, Gross. one person from Raw to determine who's going to be the king and queen of the ring. Um, I believe EO Sky qualified for the women. Um, yeah. they had Lyra Valkyria from NXT, she just got called up, she qualified for queen of the ring. Um, and they're going to continue to have matches throughout the next few weeks leading up to um, Saudi. So, what else were your thoughts on last night's Monday Night Raw, which was in Connecticut? Um, had we known, really low key, probably would have tried to go. But <laughs> honestly, but, yeah. it was solid. Like for real, for real, is is what this new era is. Sometimes you just need wrestling. It felt like a UFC event, but in a good way. Less matches. It, it um, it was like it was. It was what in the anime where this is the pure action, barely any storytelling. We just want to kick each other's asses. That's it. That's how mm-hmm. I felt. It was a we're going all out. So solid. It was good. No complaints. I loved it. I, it I right. love. Yo, Phil has me so weak with this whole. I'm gonna be upset if they do this shit at class or the castle. I'm gonna be upset, but I see that's what they're gonna probably end up doing. So, um, at the beginning of the show, Drew McIntyre was um, not medically cleared, so he was replaced <laughs> by Jay Uso, and Jay Uso ended up qualifying and having a match against Finn Balor, which low-key all made sense. Like, I don't even know if the whole him being injured is, like, real or not, but how that played out was the realest way it could have played out. Like, yeah, you had him presenting Jay for taking his spot again in his spotlight to then... Um, CM Punk missing him by seconds and then coming out and doing the promo and Loki calling him a whole a whole bitch. So but then Punk you heard y'all heard about Punk being stuck in headquarters? Is is yeah. was that real? No, I, I don't know, like, I, don't know. I, don't I was know. like, 
Yo, when he came out, because I heard it earlier at yesterday, and I was just like, wait, what? And then when he came out, he was like, yeah, you know, I just got out of headquarters about a few hours ago. I was like, what? I don't know. I mean, it's believable. Like, what would you... Yo, so question, and then we'll, you know, wrap up, because we just wanted to give you guys a quick hour. Um, If y'all was stuck in WWE headquarters for a full 24 hours, what would you do? Like, Oh, I'm going to the archive rooms. I look at forbidden film. That's it. Your brother because... probably gonna find it. <laughs> I'm gonna have some fun. Like... Please, they, I know they got good food. I'm gonna yeah. work out, get a workout in, go through the archive, sleep, wake up the next morning, and then go home. <laughs> but usually, like twenty four hours, twenty four hours as an adult, go um go like this. You feel me? It's only for um, um overnight. It's like eight hours if that. So that's gonna buy by quick. No, nah, yeah, like I totally, but see, I feel like I would want to get stuck with like, like at least like a solid six a of my weekend. friends. Like I, I would want to like low key play manhunt. I would want to like watch old wrestling shit on like a big screen projection screen if they have one. Like I would want to like fake do an episode of the bump. Like I feel like I would want to do so many different things. <laughs> David said, "I'm finding old belts. I'm finding all the old belts." Um, Ow. that's so funny. But um, last but not least, um, yo, did y'all watch? There was an episode of Dark Side of the Ring with Sandman. Oh, I loved oh, yeah. it. Yo, that that was good. That was, good. was so good. That, that was crazy. Like, like most of the stuff, like that, especially that ECW period, I vividly remember. If so I was just sitting here, like, oh my god, like yeah, I like, love when they spoke about the Rave his Raven storyline. Yeah, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yo, and how they had to. They had the K favorite where they had to take separate cars and then meet up, have meet up places and stuff like that. Like I was just like, yo, y'all really? They was really living the gimmick. That was fire. That was fire. And and I, I love the fact like like his children can be able to tell those stories to us. I thought it was dope. Um, Sandman, I feel like definitely does not get as much credit as he probably should. Like one of the first, if not the first, to his entrance through the crowd. I didn't know I was that. I was just like, whoa. I love um, his mindset, though. How creative he was thinking about new stuff to do. Like, hitting him, like shit that made sense. How he how he thought of different things. And you also got to give Paul Heyman props, man. Listen. Thank you, girl. Listen, Paul Heyman is the brains of just with the entire brains of that operation, so... And he definitely, he definitely looks out for Sandman in more in more than one way, and that that I I I kind of appreciate. I wish Paul was actually in the episode. I think that definitely would have. Um, I believe that David <laughs> that he smoked a blunt with Sandman at Wrestle King. <laughs> I believe that. Hands down. True. I saw him with uh, Valvina, so I get it. Okay, <laughs> talk about let's talk about it. Valvina. <laughs> Oh, you think Godfather gonna have like a a, a party WrestleMania weekend? Probably. Ooh. Oh shoot, I forgot. <laughs> so Wally Mania might be crazy. Wally Mania's gonna be crazy in Vegas, bro. Yeah. Oh my God, I don't even, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think about that yet. <laughs> let's get through, let's get through the next few pay per views we got going on. Um, so to wrap up, we will be back next week. Um, on our regular, I believe on our regular Friday. No, yeah, no, but yes, a regular Friday time. So make sure to tune in for that. Uh, we will be back at Legends for King and Queen of the Ring at the end of the month. Yes, sir. Um, and then, but last but not least, double or nothing. Oh, double or nothing is the next day. Oh, shit. back to back, Jesus. Double or nothing that yeah. Sunday in in Vegas. <laughs> um. So make sure to tune in for that. Um, and then, you know, all roles are leading to Java Slam 4. So make sure if you have not gotten your tickets. You got shots at Benjamin, people. Definitely have some more announcements coming in the next few weeks. So make sure to stay tuned to all social media platforms of ours, along with Battle Club Pro, as we do start to announce the talent that will be appearing at Java Slam. So make sure to tune in for that. But we did announce once again the golden standard. Shelton Benjamin himself will be in the building, will be in Brooklyn um, August the 24th. So make sure to come out, get your tickets now, because I yes, promise sir. you it's going to be the summer event you do not want to miss. All right. Um, any last words, guys, before we do sign off? No, yes, nope. maybe. 
y'all have anything going on? Any? No, yes, maybe. Well, Mr. Black, make sure you can see the ice your foot. Um, because that's wild. <laughs> and, yeah, um, yeah, I know. Um, but we do look forward to um thank you guys for joining us on a Tuesday night. Um, you could be watching yes. NXT if you're watching us. We appreciate you for joining us. Um, like I mentioned, we will be back next week, next Friday, so make sure to tune in for that. As always, I'm Janelle from HR here with our Mr. Mr. Wilkins and Mr. Black. Hashtag Black Excellence. Hashtag we are out. Peace, guys. Bye.